Hey everyone, welcome back. So I hope everyone is having a great Wednesday. I'm a little bit under the weather. Um, don't know what's going on. Got some body aches, uh, muscle aches. So hopefully we'll get through this. But it wasn't a good day in the markets today. So we'll look at the markets, Bitcoin, Ethereum as well. Those were both down. Uh, miners were down also for, for the day as well. So we'll get into all that. And we'll take a look at the contagion for FTX. Now we got Genesis involved in this as well, along with Gemini a little bit. And so we'll continue uh, talking about this a little bit and talk about it some more. And then we got Solana Q3 results, hosting not profitable. We'll take a look at that as well. Uh, that came out two days ago, I think. It's just a lot of uh, reports have been coming out. So I'm trying to get through them as fast as I can. And that is it. So that will be it for today. So as always, not financial advice for entertainment only. Do your own research. I'm investing in the following quotes and companies for full disclosure, so you guys are aware. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. I'm losing my voice already. Uh, forgive me here. Okay, let's try this again. Let's take a look at uh, the markets right now. So the markets were down at 8.83% for the S&P to 3,158. Dow Jones was down 0.12 to 33,553, and the NASDAQ was down 1.45% to 11,689. Bitcoin is actually trading up a little bit right now. It did switch over to the new day on the old day. That was today. It's kind of weird, I know. Uh, it was down 1.38% to a close of $16,645, a high of $16,994, and a low of $16,358 for the day. Now, on the one-day chart... We're still looking bearish on it. We can see here that the RSI is at 37. Last time the RSI was here, we were a little bit higher in price at that point. So it's not looking good right now in the daily. Four hours seem to change over a little bit. Uh, if we look at the RSI 47 to here, it was actually, no, there was price was a little bit higher there. My mistake on that one. I thought it was looking a little bit better. I was going back a little bit further back to here, I think. Yeah, so still not looking great on the four hour. One hour, same thing. We're seeing that the RSI is at 52 right now. Last time we were around this range was right around here and we were still higher in price. So we still don't have any direction as far as which way we're going to go other than possibly down. Now we are waiting for a reversal pattern to happen here, but it might take a couple of days for that to happen. So it is what it is. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum was also down today. It finished out the day today uh, with a low... Oh, well, it was down 2.92% to uh, 1,215, a uh, low of 1,185 and a high of 1,266. And we're seeing the same thing here as well in Ethereum. Now let's take a look at the miners really quick. Any was down 5.15% to 37 cents. Argo was down, uh, not down, Argo was actually up 8.26% to 9, uh, 9 cents. Bit Digital was down 8.26% to $1.11. Bitfarms was down 6.69% to $0.70. Cents. CleanSpark was down 7.34% to $2.40. Cores was down 12.59% to $0.20. Cents. Digihost was down 11.32% to $0.60. Cents. DMG was down 3.64% to almost almost $0.16. Cents. Greenage was down 9% to $0.69. Cents. Hive was down 7.84% to $2.35. Hot was down 8.39% to $1.31, that might be its new, uh, it's close to its 52 week low here. Let me see if we can find it in here. Dividend, let's see, will it show it here? Nope, I'm cast, hoping it would show it maybe in here with the 52 week, 52 week range was $1.27 to $13.74. So we're getting close to that. It might've reached today. What was the low on it today? Low was $1.29. So it's getting close to the 52 week low. Iris Energy was down 8.71 to $2.20. Luxfolio was flat. I don't even know if this thing is even trading anymore. Um, but it was flat. Marathon was down 12.53% to $8.31. Mawson was up 2.56% to $0.40. Cents. Riot was down 10.73% to $4.66. Solana was actually up to date 13.69% to $0.92. Cents. Um, that is surprising, actually. And Stronghold was down 7.06% to $0.80. Cents. Okay, let's take a look at the network hash rate really quick. See what's going on there. And it is coming down a little bit here. It's down to $262 million right now. We did uh, hit 271 here. But it is trending downwards, it looks like. Uh, but we still have this trend going upwards. We'll see if it actually breaks that kind of trend that we have here going on this line. 
uh, going further. And that would be a sign that miners are turning off because it's just not profitable for them to do it anymore. Okay, let's take a look at the story that we have on Gemini, BlockFi, Genesis, announcing new restrictions as FTX contagion spreads. This is never good. We had this, you know, happen early in the summer with uh, Luna and everything else that happened at that time. And I'm just going to say it one more time. And I'll say it at the end of the video, um, get your coins off of exchanges, get them onto Harbor wallets. Um, if you, you know, want to keep them safe. Right now, it was not the time to gamble with those types of things. So in the latest fallout from FTX rapid collapse last week, the uh, lending arm of crypto investment bank Genesis Global Trading is pausing new loan originations and redemptions. The company announced in its uh, thread on tweets, in a thread of tweets on Wednesday. Let's take a look at those tweets. Here's what Genesis had to say. Let me see if I can zoom this in for you guys. Be a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. So Genesis, we recognize how challenging this past week has been due to the impact of the FTX news. At Genesis, we are entirely focused on doing everything we can to serve our clients and navigate this difficult market environment. Everybody says this when they're in uh, hot water. Genesis spot and deriv derivatives trading and custody businesses remain fully operational. We continue to support our clients who rely on us during volatile market conditions to manage their risk and execute on their business strategies. Okay. We would like to emphasize that Genesis Global Trading, our broker dealer that holds our bit license, is independently capitalized and operated and separate from all other Genesis entities. So I guess that's good, but we'll see how long that'll last. The default of 3AC negatively impacted the liquidity and duration profiles of the, our lending entity, Genesis Global Capital. Since then, we have been de-risking the book and shoring up our liquidity profile and the quality of our collateral. Um, and obviously FTX happened. However, FTX has created unprecedented market turmoil resulting in abnormal withdrawal requests which have exceeded our current liquidity. So people started to panic. They started to get their coins off, which is a good thing. We're kind of seeing who's swimming without any clothes on right now uh, once you take out all the capital that's in the, in the markets. Uh, puts a squeeze on them. Uh, continuing on here, so our number one priority is to serve our clients and preserve their assets. Therefore, in consultation with our professional financial advisors and counsel, we have taken the difficult decision to temporarily suspend redemption and new loan originations in the lending business. Um, so that has been put a halt on it. And let's go back here. So that's what they had to say. Going down here. Later Wednesday morning, the uh, Winklevoss Brothers Gemini Exchange said it was pausing withdrawals on its interest-bearing earned accounts as a result of Genesis changes. Genesis is the lending partner for that program, so they're being affected by it. Um, here's a quote from them. We are working with the, the Genesis team to help customers redeem their funds from the earned program as quickly as possible. We will provide more information in the coming days. Gemini said, noting that the change doesn't impact any other Gemini products and services. So that was good. But then around noon Eastern time, reports surfaced that Gemini services were offline. The company said it experienced an Amazon Web Services outage on one of its primary databases and that it was working to bring the exchange back up. So hopefully that's all that that was. Um, but there was a lot of people scrambling to get on Gemini to get their coins off. That could have also had an effect on maybe overloading the service. Uh, it wasn't set up for it. So that could have been possibly there. The decision reflects a sign of contagion outside of BlockFi, which is reportedly preparing for a potential bankruptcy filing, according to the Wall Street Journal. The cryptocurrency lender had already halted withdrawals of customer deposits and admitted that it has significant exposure to the now bankrupt crypto exchange FTX and its sister trading house Almeida Research. So we talked about this uh, last week, I think it was, about it. And I said, then get your uh, coins off the exchanges. Uh, the journal citing people familiar with the matter added that BlockFi is also planning to lay off more of its workers as it braces for a possible Chapter 11 filing. Though the firm stopped short of saying a majority of its assets are custodied by FTX. So we don't know there. Hopefully we'll find something out. And then Sam Bankman Freed, Crypto's Exchange FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the U.S. last week. We talked about this. Approximately 130 additional affiliated companies are part of the proceeding, including Almeida Research, Bankman Freed's crypto trading firm, and FTX US, the company's US subsidiary. So that's also tied into it. And FTX, let me see here. FTX may have more than 1 million creditors, according to an updated bankruptcy filing Tuesday, that was yesterday, hinting at a huge impact of its collapse on crypto traders. Not good. Uh, 
So anybody that had crypto and FTX is now going to be possibly waiting a very long time before they get their funds back. Kind of I'm hoping it's not as bad as it was with uh, Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox is still ongoing, I think. Uh, people are still waiting to get uh, their coins from that whole thing. So I'm going to say one more last time. Get your coins off the exchanges if you can. Put them into a hardware wallet while you still can. Uh, we don't know where this contagion is going to end. And hopefully it stops here, but we won't know. Okay, so get it done. All right, let's take a look at uh, Suna Holdings really quick. And then we'll get into their details and that'll be it for today. Um, today's going to be a little bit lighter day. Okay, so Suna Holdings announces Q3 2022 earnings. Michael uh, Toporek, CEO of Suna Holdings Inc. said in the quarter, Soluna continued to execute on our business plan, delivering healthy hash rate and cash contribution margins despite low BTC prices and energy market volatility. We continue to focus our resources on energizing project and Dorothy, which we expect to double our existing operating footprint. Our team is working with ERCOT to finalize the details for an energization date. Dorothy is anticipated to be one of the lowest cost facilities of its kind in North America. So that's good. And then you can go into the details here. We'll get into my spreadsheet and look at it as well. A couple of things I wanted to point out is they actually do have pretty low electricity costs. And let me see if I can find it here really quick. There it is. So it looks like they were at 2.7 cents in June, July 3.8, August was 4.49, almost four and a half cents. September's come down to 2.8. They're saying October's gonna be possibly three. November up a little bit higher as well. So they're rough around, right, uh, roughly, roughly around three and a half cents, it looks like on average, somewhere around there. And I think they even point that out in right here. Yep, this is from their Q3 filing or the presentation that they, that they did. They're saying th um, 35 dollars per kilowatt hour, um, which comes out to be, I believe, 3.5 cents, if that's uh, done correctly. So I wanted to see, let's go down here, where was I? So if we, I wanted to do a look at consolidated numbers, let me see if I can zoom this in for you guys, I should have done that already. So I wanted to see if my numbers match up with theirs. Um, this is for September numbers, so they, revenue of 1.5 million, and prop mining electricity cost was at 858,000. So I looked into my numbers here. I put in that they have an average speed of 27 terahash on the miners. They have also approximately 22,000 miners, which was calculated properly here from the spreadsheet, roughly. Their exahash is about 616 petahash, actually, 0.616 exahash. And I came up with electrical cost of 864000 and revenue of about $1.5 million if Bitcoin was around 20000 at that time. So this all does work out as I had some concern for them uh, with this low hash rate average uh, miner cost here. But if they are around $0.03 cents at that time, it all works out. So they do have some of the older miners, but thankfully they have pretty good electrical costs on those. Um, on average, they do have some miners that are, uh, what are these going to be, 23 terahash, 31, 38, 13 even. Um, I don't know if those are even profitable. I would probably turn those suckers off. And 36 terahash and 42 terahash. So they do have some older miners, but their electricity is so low, that they can still be profitable at that time. When Bitcoin was at 20,000, they were almost 42% profitable on that. Um, and I'm guessing on the wattage is about 1,800 watts for all the average for the miners basically on this. So this all works out pretty good. The only thing is now that we are at about 265 million in the network hash rate, Bitcoin price is at 16 and a half roughly. How does that impact them really quick? We'll just take a look at it and they're still profitable by 16%. So they're still okay with it being at three, even if they go up to three and a half, well that cuts it down a little bit more for them and they're down to two and a half percent profit potentially on it. Um, and then if they go to 4% for some reason in November, uh, they are not profitable right now. Okay, so that's a little concerning. At least they can turn off some of the older miners, the less efficient miners, um, and then just use the newer miners that are a little bit higher hash rate, like the 38 or the 36, including the 42, and possibly, well, if they dump the 23, they're looking at a 300, almost half of their hash rate right there being gone from that. So they got to manage it properly. Okay, so that's just 
a quick update on their numbers here because before I was just a little concerned that my numbers were off, but that all works out. Okay. Uh, all right. So, no, shares outstanding right now is 27.8 million roughly. Stock price is 82 cents. And they're at 613, 616 pata hash right now. They are trying to get to uh, 2.38. And I think this is a combination of hosting and their own. So, possibly adding 1.6, which I think is. Uh, a mixture of hosting and their and their selves, um, their self mining. Okay. Now I had them at 5.389 million in revenue for the quarter. They came in at 5.387. Uh, couldn't be any closer on that one. So we were off by only 0.05 percent on that one. So really happy about that. I did update the numbers here to have the new quarter be this current quarter that we're in, and the last three quarters be the previous last three quarters. So now we're looking at 50% net income from gross revenue. They're looking at dollar uh, four dollars and forty-one cents, and 75% net income from gross revenue. We're looking at six dollars and sixty-one cents. That is if Bitcoin starts going up, P of a ten on those, because they are not growing that much. We could get them up to maybe maybe fifteen if Bitcoin really starts going up or higher possibly. So between six dollars and sixty-one cents and nine ninety-one, but it all depends on where Bitcoin's at. Right now they're trading at. On my, based on my numbers, around a PE of two. Okay, so we got for them, and let's get into their financials part. So BTC mined for the quarter was 253.13. Starting hash rate was 613 peta hash. Ending hash rate was 613 peta hash. Uh, they mined approximately 412 BTC per exa hash, which is actually pretty good. Cost to mine one Bitcoin is 16,200. Uh, which, if we look at the numbers here, and we put in what they had back then, roughly, it's pretty close. Actually, could cost to mine one BTC it would be around fifteen, sixteen hundred uh, at that point. As yeah, that doesn't really change much, but we would have been right around there. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's see here, debt to equity that did increase, which is not good. We want that to go down. Right, current ratio higher is better. Uh, right, do I have that right? Current assets, you know, higher equals better. Uh, debt to equity, yeah, a debt to equity we want lower. I keep getting these two confused. Debt to equity we want lower. So that one actually increased, and current ratio actually decreased. So that's not good news there. Revenue was 6.3 total. That includes hosting and everything else. General administrative compensation was 5.6 million. That is now 89% of their revenue. That's not good. That's a lot. Going down here, current assets is one million in cash. Accounts receivable is about two million, so that's down from Q2. So they are burning through cash. It looks like prepaid expenses is up a little bit. Uh, deposits and equipment is way down, so that's good there. Um, let me see your total current assets is down to 5.9 million from 17 million, so that's not really good. Other assets, let's see if anything increased here. Property plant went down to 63 from 87. Intangible also went down to 38 from 41. So total assets is 109 million compared to 147 in Q2. So there's a decrease there, that's not good. They're burning through cash. Current liabilities stayed about the same, actually increased to 27.3 million from 27.2. And let's see what changed on it here. Notes payable. 13 million from 10.4. Current portion of debt went down a little bit here. Uh, other than that, not really much of a change here. Total liabilities 40 million from 41, so that's good there. And let's continue on here. Okay, total stockholder equity was 65 down from 106. So that's not good there. And revenues, let's take a look at those. So revenues were 6.3 down from 8.6. It's a given. We're in the market that we're in. Bitcoin's down. Everything else is down. That's pretty much a given that we were going to be down unless they were actually able to grow their hash rate, which they weren't. Self-mining was 5.3 million, down from 7.4. Hosting was also down to 985,000 from 100 or 1.1, almost 1.2 million on that. Here's the interesting part of it. Cost of cryptocurrency mining revenue was 4, uh, 4 million. Depreciation in costs was uh, combined with six million. Cost in data host revenue was one million um, seventy-eight thousand. 
So they're actually lose, looks like to me like they're losing money on hosting right now uh, based on this information, which isn't good. Selling general administrative expense was five million six hundred eighty six. That's up from four point eight, almost eight hundred thousand more. That's not good. They got to get that under control. Let's see here, impairment, huge impairment here on twenty eight million. Impairment on fixed assets. Um, have to look, probably dive more into this. See what's going on there. Why they had twenty eight million on that one. So total cost of revenue went up to forty eight million compared to eighteen million, which is which was a huge increase, and brought down their gross profit way down. Um, and we can see it here also gross profit minus depreciation was down to 23% from 52% in Q2. So that's not good for them. Operating expenses, other income, let's see what else we have here that jumped up. Loss of loss on debt, extinguishment and revaluation was a 12 million. So let's see, income loss was 56 million compared to 14 million in Q2. Not good. But that's based on probably all this stuff that got added in here, the 28 million up there and um, this over here. Uh, let's see here. Consolidated net loss was, or let's just go to net loss here. Net loss was 55.8, almost 55.9 million compared to uh, negative 6.5. So a huge jump in that. And they lost $3.94 per share. And they're saying that they have basic diluted shares at that point was 14.7 million, which was in a big increase, but I'm showing for them 27 million. Not sure where the discrepancy is coming from. Uh, let's see what else can we look at here. I think that is it. We pretty much covered everything. So a big concern for me is their hosting. Are they actually losing money on their hosting or not? The other thing is they haven't been really growing much either. And the other part of it is general administrative has to come down as well. Where is it? They've been stuck at the 613 petahash mark for the last, looks like possibly even October now, or October we don't know yet. But September, August, July, June, May, for like five months, they've been stuck at this. They haven't been growing at all. Um, so that's concerning the debt. Let's take a look at the debt that they have now compared with the other miners. Let's see, where is it at? Right here. So we got Saluna down here. That did, let me see, they had 34. Make sure I'm looking at this right. That increased by another 10 million in debt if you take current assets minus total liabilities. So that increase, that's not good there. And what else do we have here? Debt to equity ratio in Q2 was 3 point, or 0.38. Now it's 0.619. And their current ratio is 0.64 in Q2, and now it's 0.216. So that's not good. They're bleeding cash, it looks like. Okay, so that's it for Saluna. Uh, like to see them get better miners, more efficient miners than what they currently have right now. And... We'll see how things play out for key four for them. It's not going to be good, obviously, with Bitcoin price coming back down, hash rates going up. It's not going to be good for any of the miners, really. Uh, but we'll see who can survive it. And those that do survive it will be in a better place come when we start going back into our bull run. Um, but that's going to be a while. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. Spreadsheet, as always, going to be available to my Patreon members. Thank you for everyone there for their continued support. And... That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Have a great night. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.